welcome to Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky, for the championship game in women's basketball. The women of Troy, USC, going against the Lady Longhorns of Texas, and you're looking at the premier player in women's basketball, Cheryl Miller. She's carried the banner of the sport for four years, a four-time All-American, today in her final appearance, seeking her third NCAA title in four years. Her opponents... The Texas Lady Longhorns, the number one ranked team from the beginning of the season. And Texas trying to become the first NCAA team to go undefeated. They have dreamed of a national title for three years. Hi everybody, I'm Gary Bender and welcome on this Easter Sunday. Women's basketball has just been growing impressively. And one of the reasons the lady that's working with me today, who's worked very closely with women's basketball, Mimi Griffin. Mimi was a fine player at the University of Pittsburgh and our expert analyst today. Mimi, I would think that this game today is a dream matchup. What a game to have for women's basketball. Gary, this game today will showcase the number one team, Texas, and Cheryl Miller of USC, the number one player in the nation. Both Texas and USC have similar styles of play. They run a transition offense and a full court pressure defense. We're going to have an exciting game. Mimi, we hear so much about Cheryl Miller, her offensive ability, but today she has a very difficult defensive assignment. Coach Linda Sharp of USC told us that Cheryl will be guarding Beverly Williams. This Texas team is so balanced, it's hard to key on one player, but Linda Sharp feels that Beverly is their offensive spark and wants to take around the game early. You know, Texas has had so many good things this year, but they're an inside and outside team. Fran Harris, her outside shooter, and this freshman sensation, Clarissa Davis inside. Fran Harris is so good in her perimeter shooting that she has the green light to shoot the ball anywhere on the court. Clarissa Davis is only a freshman, doesn't even start for this team, and yet is their second leading scorer. I'm looking forward to it. Texas, USC, we'll be back with the introduction of the starting lineups from here in Rupp Arena in just a moment. Hewlett-Packard, you don't just sell business computing systems, you solve problems. So when you have an idea, you do something about it. You never stop asking, what if? You know that electronic mail project for the bank? What if we used HP methods? You know, I love everything about this car. New Chevy Nova. It's a lot more than you'd expect for the price. It's a darn good car for the money. Well, you sold me. And I really like the way it's built. Oh, it really moves. <laughs> 95% of Chevy Nova owners would recommend their new Nova to a friend. There's so much room. Oh, I thought you'd like it. And it doesn't cost much to keep it filled either. New Nova. It's a lot more than you'd expect for the price. Drive today Chevy, live today Chevy. Nova. Working hands, helping hands. Hands that got to boogie along. At McDonald's our hands are busy too. Busy bacon. Bacon, biscuits for you. McDonald's buttermilk biscuit sandwiches, sizzling sausage or bacon, a fresh egg, and melted cheese. They're taking breakfast by the hand all over the land. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. Your fresh baked biscuits mm -hmm. are a way of lending a hand. For the national title, USC and Texas. The coach of USC is Linda Sharp. In her ninth year, she's won two national titles. That in 83 and 84. She played at Fullerton State, and she said that we're not expected to win today, and she feels as an end result, her women of Troy have an added edge. Her opponent for Texas, her counterpart, is Jody Conrad, the National Coach of the Year, the winningest female coach in America. She's had 730 win seasons, including this year of 33-0. She grew up in Goldwake, Texas, a population of 1,783. And now we're ready for the introduction of our teams. The PA announcer is Jim Engel. National championship game between the University of Southern California women of Troy and the University of Texas Lady Longhorn. Now let's meet today's starting lineup. At forward for the University of Southern California, a six-foot sophomore from Santa Barbara, California, number 23, Holly Ford. At 
forward for the University of Texas, the 6'2 junior from Moscow, Idaho, number 25, Andrea Lord. At forward for the University of Southern California, a 6'3 senior from Riverside, California, number 31, Cheryl Miller. At forward for the University of Texas, a six-foot senior from Dallas, Texas, number 20, Fran Harris. At center for the University of Southern California, a 6'3 freshman from Altadena, California, number 32, Sherry Nelson. At center for the University of Texas, a 5'11 senior from Bay City, Texas, number 15, Annette Smith. At guard for the University of Southern California, a 5'9 senior from Los Angeles, California, number 44, Cynthia Cooper. At guard for the University of Texas, a 5'8 sophomore from Del Valle, Texas, number 10, Beverly guard for the University of Southern California, a 5'5 junior from the Bronx, New York, number 21, Rhonda Winda. At guard for the University of Texas, a 5'5 senior from Lubbock, Texas, number 33, Cammie Etheridge. here from the University of Southern California, the head coach of the women of Troy, Linda Sharp. In her tenth year with the University of Texas, the head coach of the Lady Longhorns, Jody Conrad. And so the stage is set. Texas, USC, Texas seeding their first title ever. Let's face it, I have a big appetite for life and I don't want anyone telling me how to live it. The world is my oyster. That's why I carry MasterCard. It opens up all the possibilities and puts me in the driver's seat. Imagine all of life's possibilities with the great one at the wheel. No, Katza. Thank you. MasterCard. How oh, sweet it is. MasterCard, master the possibility. Every day, more Americans work with Chevys than any other truck. Up early, USA, there's a lot of work you gotta do every day. And when push comes to shove, nothing works like a Chevy truck. That's been true for the past 50 years combined, and still true today. More people bought Chevys this past year than any other truck. Nothing works like a Chevy, oh yeah, Chevy. USC and Texas for the national championship. We should point out that there are some different rules in women's basketball. They have a 30-second shot clock as opposed to the men's 45. There's no 10-second timeline, no possession error. They'll jump all of them up, and the coaches do not have to remain in the coaching boxes. The other meeting this year between these two is December 10th. Texas won that 94 to 78, even though Cheryl Miller had 31 points in that game. Cheryl will go up at center circle against Annette Smith. Annette Smith is 5'11", Cheryl Miller at 6'3", and this one's underway. Holly Ford gets it off to Rhonda Wyndham. Gary, you're going to see Texas here in their traditional man-to-man -man defense. I expect them to stay in that the entire game. We'll try to set these names and numbers for you. This is Rhonda Wyndham, number 21 out of the Bronx, off to Cynthia Cooper, 44. Cooper gives it off to Cheryl Miller, and she knows, needs no introduction, and she's fouled by Annette Smith. And Mimi, I question, can Annette stay with her? As you know, she has the bad left knee. Can she stay with Cheryl Miller? What Annette lacks in physical capabilities because of that knee injury, Gary, she makes up for in smarts. She is one of the smartest defensive players on the floor today. So Cheryl Miller will test anybody, and Annette has that challenge today. She'll have two free throws coming. Cheryl averaging over 26 points a game this season. And 
she's playing with a broken finger on her left hand, the ring finger on her left hand, and it gives her considerable difficulty, and Mimi gives her more problems defensively than offensively. They've had to shift Cheryl defensively to the right side for right anticipation instead of left, because any time the ball hits her finger, she's smart. Here is Beverly Williams. We talked about the fact Cheryl will try to pick her up. Fran Harris, she is the outside shooter that is so effective. She played so well against Western Kentucky in that outside zone. Beverly Williams. And Beverly Williams starts Texas out and ties it up at two. And Linda Sharp was, was correct in her assumption that Beverly Williams is an offensive spark. She makes things happen out there. She's the catalyst. Here is Wyndham looking inside to Cynthia Cooper. Cooper will try one from the free throw line and it's rebounded by Holly Ford. We're going to have a pushing foul on Sherry Nelson. Nelson is the freshman who's matured and come on so well for Linda Sharp. She she didn't start earlier in this season, but she played so well towards the middle that she earned herself a starting berth, Gary. Here you can see the shot go up. Positioning was bad in that case. She should not have gone after that rebound and drew the foul instead. Jody Conrad told us that the boards are so important in this game, and they started out doing a good job on the defensive boards there. Here's Annette Smith. She'll kick it off to Harris, and Harris deadly from outside misses that. Annette Smith, and a fine spinning move by the senior at 5'11". Gary, look how quick she is. That's the thing. She's 5'11", but she can play center because of the quickness. She's considered to be the best little center in women's basketball. Here is Wyndham at the other end. Andrea Lloyd tips it out to Beverly Williams. Williams is just a sophomore out of the Valley, Texas, a suburb of Dallas, and you're going to hear a lot about her in the next two years. Andrea Lloyd has been playing with a bad knee. She's going to have to have arthroscopic surgery after the season is over. And it's tipped out of bounds, and Texas will reload at the 18-18 mark. 4-2, Texas with the lead. USC is in their man-to-man -man defense. The last time they played, they started out in a zone, and it was not very effective. Linda Sharp, many people feel she may be the next Olympic coach in 1988. Here is Fran Harris. Harris out of Dallas, moving inside, and... The six-foot senior who averaged 13 and a half points a game has given Texas a four-point lead. The seniors for this Texas squad were relatively quiet Friday night, but I guarantee you tonight they're going to have a great game. Cheryl Miller gets it inside to Sherry Nelson, stripped momentarily by Harris, and Nelson with a flat shot, and here comes Cammie Etheridge. She is so creative in the open floor. She's the point guard extraordinaire. Here is Fran Harris. You can't leave her open like that. And this is what Texas does so well. They put pressure on you offensively as well as defensively. They'll push the ball up every time. Texas has jumped to a six-point lead. Cynthia Cooper brings it down. I get the feeling USC is really forcing some things. They're not very patient offensively. After he's jumping out on women, she's only 5'5 from the Bronx. Here's Cynthia Cooper and her drive. The basket will count and she is fouled. So Cooper cuts it to four and has a chance for a three-point play. That was a key move by Cynthia Cooper because not only is it a basket, but it also gives USC a chance to settle themselves down. Texas has had a fast start here. You can see Cynthia's good move and she draws the foul as well. Maybe this will give her USC teammates a chance to catch their breath and regroup. And so the foul sends Cooper to the line. Foul going against Beverly Williams, her first. Cynthia Cooper was out of basketball because of personal reasons. She had to help her family financially. She's come back this season has been so integral in the success of the women of Troy. She goes for the steal there. She grew up in the Watts area, went to Lock High School in Los Angeles. 8-5, Texas. Here's Cammie. She is so much fun to watch outside. She is the leader of this team. Make no mistake about it. She will not score that much, but she will create the opportunities for her teammates. Andrea Lloyd, an outstanding rebounder. And it goes to Harris again. Cheryl Miller on her now, and Harris is not intimidated at all. She already has six points. This is a great sign for the Texas team. They are attacking them early on the inside. They want to establish that inside game right off the start. Well, you said this would be full court up and down, and it has been that. Fast baseball game. Here's Cheryl Miller using a pick by Holly Ford. Can't get it, gets her own rebound, and loses it. Annette Smith has got it. Out it comes to Cammie Etheridge. And it goes to Harris, and it's going to be touched last by Cynthia Cooper. It'll be Texas' basketball. Let's look now. Early, USC having difficulty. One of five. Again, though, I just don't feel like they've settled down in this game yet. No, they haven't, Gary. The nerves on the USC team are definitely evident by that shooting percentage. Texas, on the other hand, 
<laughs> they're making shots like that. They're not nervous at all. Boy, Beverly Williams is some talent. As she drives inside, she has four points, 12-5. Texas at the 16-17 mark of this first half. Lyndon, they call her the E.F. Hutton on the team. When she talks, everybody stops and listens. <laughs> He's not very big at 5'5", five five, but she has great personality. Conrad is indicating three seconds in the lane. She wanted that call, and we're going to have a foul on Andrea Lloyd, the junior out of Moscow, Idaho. Andrea Lloyd is going to be a key to this game tonight. She was a key in their previous meeting, Gary. She has not been playing well because her timing is off with that knee injury. But this is the last game of the season. I don't think she's going to let that knee bother her at all. Texas has great depth. We'll see a lot of players before this game is over. Up it comes to Cooper. Cooper with Williams in front of her, but Cynthia Cooper hits it, and it's 12-7 now, Texas. I would think it would be tough to pressure Texas with Etheridge handling the ball. She gives it off now to Andrea Lloyd. It's not just Etheridge. Every player on this team can handle the ball, and that's what makes them so effective, breaking any kind of pressure that is put on them. Beverly Williams on the other end of the court. She plays so well defensively. Here is Lloyd. Beautiful pass inside, and a chain shot that time by Harris, and a foul is spotted inside. We've had some very creative efforts by Harris and Williams as they ducked inside. Let's look at it again. Their inside game is so important to them, and you can see here why. Fran Harris cuts across the key, goes right up, is not intimidated by any action that's coming at her, and the offensive boards, they are just doing a very fine job right now. That foul was on Cherry Nelson, by the way. Her second is Annette Smith misses. Here comes Cooper. Cooper ducking inside, follows her own shot. Beautiful second effort by Cynthia Cooper. Pack West. She's had 26 points on two different occasions. And Cynthia Cooper has seven of USC's nine points as they trail 12 to 9. Cheryl Miller thus far hasn't really acquitted herself in this game. One of the things that'll be careful to watch as we go on into the game. Let's see how many of USC players contribute. They need everyone in there. Cheryl that time made them change the shot and comes down to the rebound. Cooper again from outside, and we're going to have another foul. Bob Olson, one of the officials, indicating the foul. Linda Sharp's team got off very shaky, but she didn't seem to be all that concerned. Maybe she knows the personality of her team. When you have a transition team, Gary, a spark is all you need to get yourself going, and when that spark occurs, then they can come back from a deficit like they were. And so we're going to have a break in the action. 14.48 to go in this first half. The Longhorns by three. No, Yoke, you've been here three weeks waiting for Halley's Comet? Yep, and I already started celebrating with a Cole Miller Lite. Yeah, light tastes great, though. Light's less filling, too, Tommy, and I can't get filled up. I've been waiting all my life to spot this baby. Well, how about one for me? Sure! Wow. Incredible! Well, I was. Uh, nothing, you uh, Listen, uh, I, I gotta run. Okay, but you're gonna miss it. There. Nope. Wherever you look, there's only one light beer. Miller Lite. security of health care coverage when and where they need it. They couldn't picture their lives without it. Could you? It's Katherine Hepburn and Mrs. Delafield wants to marry. She's older than you are. He could always finish high school later. Tonight. Isn't life delicious? Texas leading by three, 12 to nine, and Mimi and myself joined now by the coach of Old DU, who won it all last year, Marianne Stanley. Marianne, your assessment of the first minutes of the game. I say right now, Texas looks like a veteran team that's very relaxed. They feel like they're in their groove right now. On the other hand, USC appears to be a little bit tentative. There's a lot of one-on-one -on -one action going on out there, and I think they need to settle down and play some team basketball. You know, you might expect the contrast there because Texas has had so much pressure on it being the number one ranked team. Well, I'll tell you, I've been in this position before, and I think they're relaxed because they got through that regional final, and they're here now. Now, early in the game, they put Cheryl Miller as best they can on Beverly Williams. Were you surprised by that defensive move? I was surprised by it, and also I noticed that within three minutes, they switched Miller and took her away off of Beverly Williams and matched her up inside, and that's critical because they need her rebounding, and she cannot rebound from the perimeter as well. Cynthia Cooper there is 
Whistled down for the foul. That is her first. Well, we were away a while ago, Annette Smith had committed her second foul for Texas. And so, I would imagine a year ago, you had some butterflies in your stomach if you were in this championship game. I'll tell you, these two teams are keyed up right now. I think the nervousness is over. They're going to settle down and just play good basketball. Mary Ann Stanley, the coach of Old Dominion. Thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. 14-11 a count here. Mimi Griffin and Gary Bender with Texas leading. And I thought that was exactly what was happening to USC. They looked just a little hairy, didn't they? That was a good thought by Mary Ann Stanley. The comfort factor, factor here for Texas is key. They were not comfortable in the semifinal game. Unless they are comfortable tonight, they will not beat this USC team. But Cooper now has cut it to one after that last break in the action. It looks like USC has settled down considerably. Tammy Etheridge will kick it off to Fran Harris. Trying to shake loose inside is Clarissa Davis who checked in after that last break. Here's Etheridge trying one. Davis, there she is, the freshman. She has something. She is contributing already in this game. And this is exactly what Jody Conrad expects from her. Some instant contributions. This is the championship game. Rupp Arena, Lexington, Kentucky. 13-25 to go in the first half. Texas by three. USC trying to win their third title in four years. Texas, their first ever, the top-ranked team of the country. I'm Gary Bender along with Mimi Griffin. Glad to have you with us on this Easter Sunday. Sherry Nelson, the freshman. The basket will count, and she is fouled. An interesting point here is that USC is also going right to the inside on Texas. They're also trying to establish their inside game. These two teams are so similar that this game is going to be a toss-up till the end. Here you can see Sherry Nelson going right around with the dribble and up for a strong basket. That's where she has been so helpful, this USC team. She's the most improved in the position where they've needed the most improvement. They are physical, and one of the reasons is Sherry Nelson. She's so competitive in that pivot spot, and she has made a three-point play and has tied this ball game up at 16. Here comes Clarissa Davis, 32 points the other night to go along with an outstanding rebounding effort. The turnover, here comes Cheryl Miller. Miller kicks it out to Wyndham. Etheridge trying to stay with Wyndham, and those two point guards will be going at it all afternoon long. Inside it goes to Cheryl Miller. Miller posting up, good change, and she gets it. Annette Smith is going to have a long night, Gary. She is a little bit slower because of that knee and cannot keep up with the quickness of Cheryl Miller. There's Clarissa Davis. I know Jody Conrad was concerned about how a freshman would react to the pressure. I don't think it's bothering her at all. <laughs> Not at all. We're going to see this match seesaw back and forth at least for this first half. When you start talking about the prototype players of the future, it's Clarissa Davis, Linda Sharp right now with her team down or tied at 18, will inbounds. Off it comes to Holly Ford. Steal from behind by Cammie Etheridge. Cammie out of Lubbock, Monterey High School. Picks it off to Beverly Williams. Texas hasn't made that many substitutions, but they can go very deep on their bench. But that isn't valuable unless you use it, Gary. And there's a charge on Beverly Williams. Let's go back now and watch the premier player in women's basketball. This is what makes her such a strong player. She posts up low very well. And look at the double pump fake to get around her defender and in. She's so talented. I mean, she's the number one player. What more can you say now? The coach Linda Sharp said that she's always intense. He's never had to talk to her about being ready for a basketball game. Went in, into Holly Ford, and we're going to have a jump ball. And as opposed to the men, where you have an alternating possession, they jump it up. At the conclusion of this NCAA Women's Basketball Championship game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player from each team. And Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the general scholarship fund of each school to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. And out it comes to Cheryl Miller. 18 all, 11.53 to go in the first half. Holly Ford stripped of the ball by Etheridge. Etheridge with Cooper on her back. She protected the ball, but she missed the shot. The rebounds the miss. Nope, she was out of bounds. Etheridge had the right idea, Mimi. She was trying to keep her body between the defender and the ball, but she missed the shot. She it did, was an end result. She did a great job there, Gary. Look at the way she keeps moving over in front of Cooper trying to protect the ball. Uh, the unfortunate part is she fell away from the basket and ended up short on her shot. Cynthia Cooper brings it down. Why, what chemistry Cooper and Wyndham had. They just seemed to know instinctively what each other is doing. They played together for so long in that backcourt. Inside it goes to Cooper. And Cooper 
doesn't get the roll, and Clarissa Davis is there, and that's certainly no surprise. The way she can rebound, she had 18 rebounds Friday night. One of the interesting things to watch as this game goes on is to see which of these teams is more effective in their half-court game. That's going to be one of the keys. They both can run well, but who can shoot well from their half-court game? And Clarissa Davis picking up the foul. Let's watch it, see what happened here off the ball. And this will be her second foul and the elbow, and they're going to allow that, I guess, to happen. Now, wait a minute. We have a double foul here. They're going to jump it up at center circle. There's the stats on Clarissa from Friday night and the performance that she put on. That's an incredible statistic. The points, the rebounds, everything. The whole entire game for a freshman in the semifinal national championship game. The other foul went on Nelson. So it was a double foul between Nelson and Davis. And they're just establishing control of the two officials in the early going of this game. They just want to introduce themselves to one another early on, Gary. Now, these two met on December 10th. I think they know each other pretty well, don't you? <laughs> now, here in the ball game is Yolanda Wimbish, number 34. She has been an energizer for this team in the estimation of Coach Conrad. She comes in and gives them an instant offense. One thing that Yolanda has to be careful of, though, is she tries too hard too early. And you can see her fumble the pass early on. Once she gets into the flow, she'll be more comfortable. Larissa Davis is off to a big afternoon. Already eight points. Texas by two. Intended for Miller and Annette Smith coming over the back has committed the foul. That, that's a key call because Annette Smith had position there. She saw the pass, anticipated it. Annette is going to handle Cheryl all day as long as she's in the game. That bench scoring is all represented by Davis. All eight points. That looks like a replay of Friday night. That foul, by the way, on Smith was his third, so Jody Conrad has to be very concerned as Cheryl Miller will go to the free throw line. There is Miller able to connect. Jody is very upset about the way this game is being called. I think it started Friday night. There were a lot of real inconsistency, especially on the charging call. That's true. And right now, I think they're calling it awfully close for a championship game. They're normally told to let these players play. And if there's no harm, no foul. And I think they're calling it close right now. Well, let me tell you, it's a problem not peculiar to women. We've seen this in the men's division as well. <laughs> It's 20 apiece as Wyndham bats it out of bounds, and Texas now will move it in. And speaking of men's basketball, of course, the championship game Monday night, Duke against Louisville. Into the ball game now is Gay Hemphill, number 22, a senior out of Plainview, Texas, playing with a specially designed back brace. She's had a lot of difficulty with her back. And over the back is Fran Harris. She tips it out, and USC will have it. There is Gay Hemphill. She came in Friday night, had two excellent early baskets, but that brace, I guess as she falls down, she has a tough time getting up off the floor. She does. She hurt that about mid-season and sat out quite a few games, but is back, and as you called her, an energizer for this team. She gets instant offense for them. It's 20 apiece as we approach 10 minutes to go in the first half. Cooper saves it into Holly Ford, whose brother Don played for the Los Angeles Lakers for many years. And Cheryl Miller is fouled again, and Jody is concerned about the foul difficulty. Committing that foul is Gay Hemphill, who had just checked into the ball game. So all of a sudden now, you see Texas is going to have to use that depth. Their foul difficulty is starting to mount. They are going to have to use the depth. And you can see here that she really did anticipate the pass well. The thing is that they're going to have to both front and play behind Cheryl Miller because she's just that good. Right now, denying her is not working. Let's try putting two players on her instead of just one. So Cheryl Miller able to connect from the free throw line. This year, shooting 73%. She's over 3,000 points in her career. Let's watch her now off the ball. Look how physical she is. Look at the pushing that goes on. That's the kind of abuse she's taken all season. You, you, it's a wonder she can walk in this game. Well, she had four stitches over her eye, a concussion, a sprained neck, and now a broken finger. I don't think there's any part of her that hasn't been beaten up at one time. And Jody Conrad is really working on the officials. Her team and getting into some foul difficulty, now trailing by two. Etheridge, the point guard against Wyndham. USC is still in that pressure man-to-man -man defense, which has been very effective for them. Here is Hemphill, and she shuffled her feet. She walked with the ball. That basket will not count. Gary, you've noticed a definite shift in momentum here. Texas is making some slight mental errors, and USC has picked up the ball and run with it. And so after a shaky beginning, USC now has taken a two-point lead. Bosses don't believe there's a difference between memory writers from Xerox and typewriters from you-know-who. Ha! Bosses? 
begin. Both correct errors and center automatically, but memory writers have bold face, automatic table setup, and outstanding touch and feel. They're also quiet and much easier to learn and use. So, perfect documents are a snap. Take a long lunch. For perfect documents every time, call Team Xerox. This is today's Chevrolet Camaro. Saturday night, USA. Heartbeat pumping, time to play. Camaro's waiting for you. The main VH Chevrolet. Big night history, go on way. Street Camaro News. Saturday night, USA. Streets and I'm Chevrolet. Drive today, Chevy. The Tournament Players Championship continues on CBS Sports. Next. USC by two in this championship game from Rupp Arena. And following this, the TPC final round coverage. Yesterday was very windy, and there were a lot of golf balls that were finding the water. But look what Larry Mize was able to do. Minus 16, a happy 12 under. Murphy, Simpson, and Kite. Outstanding leaderboard as we go into the final round of the TPC. That's to follow this one. USC with the delegation here. And of course, you think of USC, you think of the pom-poms, you think of the band, and they're all here. And it's a very enthusiastic crowd. Seen right now, a two-point game with the women of Troy leading. This is not unusual for a team to hang with Texas early on. It's the pressure that Texas puts on, on you throughout the game that wears you down in the second half. Jerry Nelson was forced away by Davis and took a very difficult shot at best. The break comes down and a fine running one-hander that time by Wimbush. Yolanda Wimbush, sophomore out of Victoria, Texas. She's the only left-hander in this game and that was a very pretty shot. 22 apiece and here's a foul on Hemphill. That'll be her second. Gary, they are really calling this game tight and I think that's going to have a big effect on Texas. Although they do have the depth and they can keep running players in and out, if they can't establish their game because of the tight foul, it's not going to help them at all. Here is quite a shooter, Karen Howell. She is a freshman out of Portland, two times the Portland Player of the Year in high school, and she has a great future ahead of her. And she's been playing very well in the big games for Linda Sharp. She had 14 points on Friday as Wyndham goes to the line. Out of John F. Kennedy High School in the Bronx, she is the floor general, make no mistake about it. USC's all-time assist leader. And she gets a roll. Gary, she also had what was going, going to be considered a debilitating knee injury at the sports festival. She fell and tore every ligament in her knee. The doctors told her she wouldn't be able to walk correctly again, much less play basketball. Well, we have a lot of that in this game. And that's Smith. We can develop that story later. USC now missing their first free throw. They were 9 of 10 before that. 23-22, the women of Troy. Texas is getting very sloppy on their passes. They're not moving to meet the pass, and the pass is not on the mark. They've got to clean that up. You saw a moment ago, Texas has committed 10 fouls to USC's four. Al trying to stay with the outside part of this game. Fran Harris, rebound, Wimpish, she lost it, and we're going to have a traveling call. I think Coach Linda Sharp of USC is making a smart move right now, staying in that man-to-man, -man because Texas has seen zones all season, and that's what they're used to playing against in their half-court offense. They're not so used to this man-to-man -man pressure defense. June Corteau and Bob Olson, the two officials in this game, there was a big debate by the television committee as to who should officiate this game, and right now, the two coaches are not <laughs> letting them feel that they're very comfortable or doing a very good job. There's a feed inside to Miller, and there is the kind of move you expect from her, but it doesn't go. Hemphill brings it down, stripped away, and regained by the Lady Longhorns. Etheridge looking inside. Davis, good catch, and she's fouled. That was a difficult catch at best, as a foul will go on Cooper. Cooper's looking towards the other ref. She thought June Corteau was going to call it on, on Clarissa Davis. But it's Cooper and her second personal foul, a 15 foul now, against USC. And so to the line for the first time goes Texas and Clarissa Davis. Clarissa's from San Antonio, John Jay High School. Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year in one poll out of Shreveport, Louisiana. They called her the best freshman in the country. That earlier graphic, Gary, was very telling. 
This is the first time Texas has been to the line. USC has been to the line 10 times. The calls definitely aren't going Texas's way right now. But as you said, Texas probably can hang in there better than USC because of their depth. Davis now with nine points, four rebounds. An interesting statistic also is that nine of their 23 points, I mean USC's, have been from the line. 23 all at the 8-16 mark of this first half. Tipped up by Wimbish, but Holly Ford comes up with it. There's the matchup, Davis and Miller. And right now, Davis the one point the better. Larissa Davis and Cheryl Miller, a senior and a freshman. Here's Holly Ford. She's kind of the secret weapon in the estimation of Linda Sharp. She's an excellent perimeter shooter. We've got a technical foul coming up. And it's going to go, I believe, on Jody Conrad. We told you she was working the officials, and she stepped across that line, and all of a sudden she's got the technical. The National Coach of the Year, the winningest female coach in America, and she picks up the tee. Cheryl Miller will shoot the free throw. She is still after June Cortell as Miller hits it. Now, in women's basketball, you only have one technical free throw as opposed to two in the men's. Jody's getting her money's worth on this technical. Gary, I think Jody Conrad probably did that on purpose. She needs to fire her team up, but she also wants to work these officials and make them start calling it her way later on in the game. Right now, it's going USC's way. They lead by three. Cheryl Miller trying to take Hemphill into the pick, and she did. Rebound, Clarissa Davis. Is she something? You keep forgetting she's a freshman. She's 6-1. And there's a steal attempt by Cheryl Miller. That's what Miller will do is she'll play both ends of the floor. Some of your superstars, you got to convince them to play defense, not Cheryl. No, Cheryl is so intense on both ends, and she's so physically talented. She has no limitations on either end. It comes in to Davis. This is for the national title. USC seeking the third in four years of a three-point lead over top-ranked Texas. Hip Hill. Get it in that low, it's pretty hard to stop her. She has a great turnaround move, just as we saw there. She gets instant offense for them, and, and Jody says on a lot of jump shots, on missed, missed shots and putbacks. Howell turned the ball over, and Wimpish hits at instant offense now. Four points by Wimpish, as she's hit two leaning left-handers. And all of a sudden, Texas has a one-point lead. Holly Ford to Wyndham, and she'll bring it out. Smart move by Rhonda Wyndham. She realized she had a player on her. Let's, let's bring the rest of her players down, set up our half-court offense. The Trojans of USC winning it in 83-84. And it goes to Sherry Nelson. Good inside move. She spun around Davis very effectively. One thing I was surprised to see there, she normally doesn't go left because her left hand is not that strong, but that was a good move. Nelson with five, and Davis at the other end. Nelson rips it down. The two freshmen going after each other now. You can see Texas getting the better of the bench scoring, obviously, and most of that is Davis. Here's Nelson, and Nelson had it stripped away as Fran Harris reached in. It'll be USC's basketball. That was an example of their great help defense, Texas's great help defense. Fran Harris came from the weak side and slapped that away from Nelson. Substitutions, Andrea Lloyd coming back in, Beverly Williams is checking in, and for the first time, Kara Pretty, a 6'2 senior out of Kirtland, New Mexico, number 44 in the game, and she is very tough defensively. She is their defensive specialist. She's in there to stop Sherry Nelson. She's had a couple good baskets for them. She doesn't, Jody Conrad does not want her getting any more. Tried to skip pass across that defense, and and USC, fortunately, will get it back. There is Pretty, the one you were just talking about. She came in the other night, and she's just a, a banger inside. She is really tough. Now, this is what we were talking about earlier. She's got to deny. Kara Pretty has to deny Sherry Nelson the ball, and that's what she did there. Out of Kirtland, New Mexico, as now Etheridge will kick it into Andrea Lloyd and Miller trying to get the charge on Andrea Lloyd. She's taking acting classes, and you can see right there they're paying off. Well, she's from Los Angeles. What do you expect? <laughs> nice move that time by Harris. And Fran Harris has eight points, and Texas has a one-point lead. The rebounding, Texas with the advantage, and that's something that Jody Conrad talked about as key. She said we've had to improve our rebounding this year, and they have. As an end result, they're 33-0. Whoever is on Miller at this point has one thing in mind. They want to keep her off the offensive board. They're not going to go after rebound themselves. They're going to keep her from getting the rebound. And on her now is Andrea Lloyd. And away from the ball is a foul. And it's going to go on Fran Harris. There is Lloyd. Lloyd with a bad knee and all. Had to have that knee drained on Tuesday. 
she has been in the estimation of Jody Conrad really the best all-around player she's so versatile she can do so much and now she's trying to wear Cheryl Miller down a little bit Gary I think she looks more fluid in this afternoon's game than we saw her Friday night she just didn't get into the game flow but this afternoon she is she went to Moscow Idaho to school but her parents now live in Sitka Alaska so I Long way from home. <laughs> it's a long ways from home. Karen Howell at the line. And Bob Olson spots a foul. A pushing off foul is going to go against Pretty of Texas. And I got to tell you, they are calling them close. And Jody, who got a technical <laughs> earlier, may get another one if this continues. She's looking for answers. This is a case where depth doesn't help you at all, Gary, because if the referee's going to call it this close, it doesn't matter who's in there. So Pretty committing the personal foul. That's her first personal foul as Miller will go to the line. Well, this USC team, they like to play physical. I think they bring some of that out on you. They seemingly retaliate very well. And when you have intense people like Cheryl Miller on your team, you can't play it any other way as she gets her role. First woman basketball player ever nominated for the Sullivan Award. Cheryl Miller out of Riverside Valley, and of course her brother Reggie Miller playing at UCLA. Oh, what would, a family, don't I think they? it would be easier to talk about the awards or recognition she hasn't accomplished than the one she has. It's been something. 30, 29, Miller in this game is 9 of 9 from the free throw line. You said it earlier, USC really staying in this with the free throw shooting. Here's Lloyd trying to retrieve it, and she doesn't get the roll. Pretty follows. She's got the basket and she's fouled and Cheryl Miller has committed the foul. Look at the emotion on Kara Pretty's face. She's not in there as an offensive threat, Gary. She's in there as a big defensive threat. If she can spark this team offensively, that's a bonus for Texas and something they need right now. So the second foul on Cheryl Miller is pretty well go to the line with a chance for a three-point play. You saw in that replay just how physical she is on the offensive board. She gets a three-point play, and Texas gets a two-point advantage. Fast pace game. Baseline to baseline, as expected. The two teams that everybody thought might be here playing in this championship game, they felt it was a dream matchup. Into the game now is Paula Pyers, a sophomore out of Tucson, number 13, coming in and giving him some relief in the backcourt. She is not as experienced as Ronda Winter, and this might be a chance for Texas to really pressure them and cause some turnovers. Etheridge had the steal, then they say Pyers touched it last, went over the end line, so Texas will have it. And we have a break with 4.45 to go in this championship game. Seesaw Fair and the Lady Longhorns lead it. The new 1986 Cadillac Cimarron. There really are two ways to look at it. Some people like it for all the luxury they get. Standard, push-button air, tilt wheel, cruise, power just about everything. Or it's available with more pizzazz, even more power. Either way, 1986 Cimarron people have one thing in common. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Well, maybe two things in common. Delta flies to the heart of Europe, London. Why, hello, Delta. Paris. Bonjour, Delta. Frankfurt, Munich, and Stuttgart. Good Tag, Delta. And Shannon, Ireland. A hundred thousand welcome, Delta. Six gateways to all of the heritage, tradition, and pride of Europe. All as close as a Delta jet. Europe. Delta gets you there. 230 Texas who has scored 12 of those 30 I should say USC has scored 12 of those 30 points from the free throw line and this is the home of championship basketball tomorrow night Louisville Duke from Reunion Arena LSU starting out with John Williams playing so effectively at an eight-point lead at halftime and Dale Brown thought maybe Cinderella was going to continue but then you saw that stuff by Purvis Ellison and into the championship game goes Denny Crum who won it all in 1980. So don't forget Monday night from Reunion Arena. 
Duke, Louisville for the national championship. And the women's national title being decided right now with 4.39 to go in this first half. Beverly Williams on a spin move and a beautiful shot. And it's a four-point lead for Texas. Gary, there's that offensive spark we spoke about at the beginning of the game. Beverly Williams came in right from that timeout without any hesitation. Spin dribble move and right to the basket. See, Wyndham is back in. They had Pyers in there very briefly, but Wyndham comes back in after that timeout. Inside it goes to Cynthia Cooper, and rebounded Nelson, and Nelson doesn't get it either. And another foul, and it's going to go against USC. Gary, right now I think what USC has got to start concentrating on is better half-court offense. Their points have not have come from the foul line and a little bit of half-court offense in some transition. Whereas Texas, the majority of their points, I believe they only have two from the line. Their transition game's working, their half-court game is working, which is going to be very important come second half. Well, Sherry Nelson committed her third foul, so you see into the ball game for the first time. Jemiah Bond, a senior out of Chicago. As we mentioned, Texas with two points from the line, they're two of three as Pretty will go there with a one and one. So Nelson in foul difficulty for USC. There she is, the freshman, sitting down. I thought she was playing extremely well, and Linda Sharp obviously doesn't want her sitting alongside her right now. Well, with the foul situation, she can't afford not to have her in the second half. The good thing about Jemiah Bond coming in, she adds some height and good defensive ability. The bad thing is that she's not very good on offense in terms of scoring threat. So USC's going to have to pick up the slack with their other members. Bond is six foot five. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at a team that really started putting women's basketball on the map. Immaculata College, the tradition they established back in the 70s. That will be one of our halftime features. 36-30. Baseline, Pretty comes up with another steal. And Kara Pretty's doing exactly what Jody Conrad wants her to do. Give them de a defensive lift in this game. Inside, Wimpish. And it's going to be a charge on Wimpish as the fouls continue to mount up. Miller drawing the foul. It'll be the first on Wimpish. Let's look at it again. Here's Andy Lloyd coming down, dishing off. And Wimpish does push right off there. She just needed to drive the baseline without that extra arm power. 36-30, Texas. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Miller, by the way, is only one of four from the field. Her scoring has been coming from the free throw line. Wyndham looking inside, and out it comes to Cooper. Good defense by Texas. This is a tough shot at best by Miller. Etheridge up to Andrea Lloyd, and she is moving on the floor better than she did Friday night. But here comes the steal by Miller. Two on one break, and Miller will take it in, and Etheridge made her miss the shot. She was set very well underneath the basket. Great defensive move by Cammie Etheridge. She faked to the weak side player, believing that, that Cheryl was going to dish off, but then came back and established her position. Still a six-point lead by the Lady Longhorns. Bond reaching in on Pretty. Etheridge creating things. Pretty, as an end result, has an easy two. That's Etheridge at her best. This is a tremendous bonus for this Texas team. Kara Pretty scoring. Cammy Etheridge driving the baseline and jumping off. USC got off to a shaky start. Then they were able to take the lead. Now find themselves trailing by eight. The biggest lead of the game. Holly Ford. And Etheridge, the smallest player for Texas, comes up with a rebound. Here she goes. Gives it off to Wimpish. And it's going to be off of USC. Let's go back to this play now on the break. Here's the great transition game by USC, but look at Cammie Etheridge. Watch her fake over to run to Wyndham and then establish her position with Cheryl. Made her miss a shot. Didn't get the offensive, but did not get the two points either. We're going to have a break now with 2.08 left to go in this first half as Texas right now is on somewhat of a roll. Top-ranked team in the country, leading it by eight. USC asking for the timeout. Etheridge, by the way, we're talking about her defensive effort. And she has not scored, but she has eight assists and five rebounds. And that shows you 
how she can contribute to the Lady Longhorns. Those eight assists are normally what she averages for an entire game, not a first half, Gary. I think what's happening right now is USC's shot selection is very poor. They're not taking shots they want to take. This offense is designed for one-on-one -on -one movement, but they're trying to shoot over the defense too much. Be a little more creative, open some things up with a penetration dribble or some passing. We talked about the assists of uh, Cami Etheridge, eight assists. Here is the last one. Look, she, you could see her pointing the finger, directing traffic on the floor as she dumps off to Yolanda Wimbish underneath. Yolanda didn't need that dribble. She should have gone right up with the basket. She could probably have gotten at least a foul on that. I get the feeling it's kind of a rhythm problem for USC. They get behind and they, they try to hurry it up and they're not stabilizing like they want to. And this is a veteran ball club. They should be able to do a better job in that. You know what, Gary? This USC team reminds me of the Texas team last year. Their one weak link was their half-court offense. They were so good and relied so heavily on their transition game that their half-court offense suffered. And I think that's what's happening with USC this afternoon. Afternoon. USC, when they have led at half this year, have been 28 and 1, but right now with 208 left until half, they're down by eight. Cheryl has committed two fouls. She's one of five from the field, and I think she's forced some shots. She definitely has forced some shots, especially from the top of the key where she's shooting right over people. She's too talented to do something like that, and the USC team needs her to be more selective in her shots. Imagine the pressure she must have for her final appearance, wanting desperately to win it after last year not even getting into the final four after freshman and sophomore championship season. So she wants to bow out in grand fashion, and sometimes you put some added pressure on yourself. I think what's going to happen at halftime in this game, if she doesn't come alive before then, she'll get a chance to catch her breath and realize just where she is and what she needs to do. And it goes. Wimpish, and she is fouled. Good inside pass that time by Texas. The foul will go on Bond, and that will be her first. A good sign for Texas right now, Gary, is that although they're missing shots inside, Yolanda Wimish is smiling. They're relaxed. They're all having fun, and they're playing their game. Well, USC came in here, and interestingly enough, Thursday they practiced in floral shorts, and they have a little, uh, what they call, rap session. They do some <laughs> dancing, and you might think they are the relaxed team, but it's not appearing that way on the floor now. Sometimes you try to force relaxation so much with outside props that it doesn't help inside in the head where you need it the most. That's a good point, Mimi. It really is. Is that the line now is Wimpish? Wimpish, I should say. With a 39-30 lead, she misses the second free throw. Texas with their biggest advantage as we come to the final two minutes of this first half. Here's Miller trying to take Lloyd inside. She's got a screen from Bond and nails it. Now that's the kind of shot that she's good. Off the dribble and into the air. Cheryl cannot shoot standing still. She needs a little bit of motion to make her effective offensively. There's Andrea Lloyd. Off to Etheridge. Etheridge penetrating so effectively. Off to Beverly Williams. And I tell you, she is something to watch. A little leaner there. Eight points for Beverly Williams. That's offensive spark with a capital O, capital S. Cheryl Miller now has her team trailing 41-32. She's looking for the shot, and there will be a foul on Andre Lloyd. One of the things that Texas is doing very well now that they didn't do earlier in the game is they're getting two players, and sometimes three players on Cheryl when she goes into motion with that basketball. Andre Lloyd with her second personal foul, and Miller will go to the line. Cheryl has a brother who plays in the California Angels system with the Angels now, the parent ball club. She has another sister at home, Tammy, who's quite a volleyball player. And her father, Saul, is here. He was at the press conference yesterday. So long ways from home, but enjoying it here in Lexington. That earlier graphic showed us that Cheryl Owen has one rebound. I think that has to be a record for her for one half to have one rebound. She's it shows just... that Texas is very effective in their game plan of their uh, or defensive player who is guarding Cheryl, keeping her off the boards. It's working. I tell you what they're not doing, though. They're not keeping her off the free throw line. <laughs> She's 11 of 11 now from the free throw line. 41-34. So she's hurting him in other ways, but USC still not really putting it together. Here is Pretty, and Pretty is fouled, and it's going to go on Bond, and that'll be her second. Gary, one thing I've noticed here... Things have definitely changed since Jody Conrad got that techni technical foul. Is that a smart move or what? This is really turning into Texas's favor here because there have, have not been such quick whistles. Tell you what, I wouldn't want her mad at me. <laughs> I think she got those officials' attention in a hurry, and it's a good point. You've got to work the officials. The best coaches in the business do it, and she's done it. 
Two on one, Miller pulling up. And rebounded by Pretty. And again, Pretty has been the big surprise in this first half for Texas. 41-34, Lloyd on the move. And as she ducks in, the basket will go, and we're going to have a blocking foul. Look at that move. Annette, or not Annette, rather, Andy Lloyd is into this game. She is loose, relaxed. She's running the transition game much better than she did Friday night. Look at this move inside. Scoop shot and the roll. Now, Jody Conrad is up on all the officials. I don't think they knew the basket went in. Now, yeah, there they were, and they're counting it now. <laughs> the foul is on Holly Ford, the blocking foul. And Jody got their attention from clear at the other end of the floor. She wanted the two points and a chance for a three-point play. So, Lloyd at the line. USC, by the way, scored one field goal in the last five and a half minutes. It's the foul line that's keeping them in the game at all. 44-34, 10-point lead for the Lady Longhorns. Karen Howell brings it up. Miller ducking in. Pretty cuts her off at the baseline. Tough shot. And a foul will go on Pretty as she comes across on Cheryl. But again, Cheryl is not getting any easy shots. That foul is going to go instead against Andrea Lloyd. And that will be her second as Miller goes to the line. I think the rule of verticality should have come into play there. It seemed to me that Andy Lloyd had her position and Cheryl leaned in, which Cheryl does so well. On, in most instances, she's able to get the basket as well as the foul shot because of the way she leans. Lloyd will leave with three fouls as Hemphill comes back into the ball. Oh, check that. C.J. Jones has checked into the game. Sophomore out of Las Vegas. Some of that depth that Coach Conrad has. 39 seconds left in this first half. Has Miller now 12 of 12 from the line. There's Lloyd. She's got a much nicer expression on her face this afternoon than she did Friday night. That's the first miss by the girl they call CM. 44-35. You see the time left in the first half. And inside, another foul. Holly Ford reaching around, and that will be her second foul. That was an example of great offensive positioning by a young player. She pinned her defender on her back and had the whole key to operate it. At halftime, we'll be looking at some of the outstanding players in women's basketball. Feature on Immaculata College. Very interesting story. I, I think many people may have forgotten the outstanding school located on the suburbs or the outskirts of Philadelphia. Anyone who's interested in women's basketball, Gary, will not ever forget Immaculata College. Let's go back to this last foul by Holly Ford. Look at the way CJ pins Holly Ford on her back, and she's got all that room inside the key to operate. An easy shot, and draws the foul as well. CJ Jones gets one of two from the line, and Ford comes down with a rebound. 45-35. USC would like to get inside that 10-point deficit before this first half ends. Wyndham taking Etheridge inside. Beautiful play, but she can't get the shot to drop. We're going to have a hell ball, and this is going to be a mismatch. Wyndham at 5'5", and Kara Pretty, on the other hand, is listed at 6'2". I can't say enough about Kara Pretty. She has really turned this first half around for Texas when they needed it. She came in with some key rebounds, some key defensive maneuvers, and some key baskets. USC's made some good moves inside, but the ball just not going. And Rhonda Wyndham's last shot, very indicative of that. And she did a pretty good job on this jump, but Beverly Williams comes up with it. Seven seconds. Pretty trying to come up, and we have another jump ball, this time with two seconds. And so the former Parade All-American from Kirtland, New Mexico, will go up against the best Cheryl Miller. Ten-point lead for the Lady Longhorns. Howell with a desperation partially blocked. And we have come to the close of this first half in this title game. The score at halftime, the Lady Longhorns 45, the women of Troy 35. CBS Sports coverage of the Women's NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Yamaha Big Wheels come with extra wide, extra stable tires and a low profile that makes them simple to ride. So it's fun and easy to get to places you might not go otherwise. So what took you guys so long? Nothing. The Yamaha Big Wheels. 
Perhaps they're the adventure you've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Be at the Silver Bullet tonight. Silver Bullet. Sipping on a cold course light. Party oh. and light. 35 wins in a row. The guy never loses. Never does. What's the secret? Loose chili. Loose chili? Yep. He never eats it. Ah. You have any popcorn? There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet tonight. Coors Light Beer. Radio Shack understands that a computer purchase is a serious personal and business decision. But what's really important is the company behind the computer. At Radio Shack, when you buy a computer, you buy a company. A company committed to technology, service, and support. We'll be here when you need us. With a telephone hotline, training, education, and excellent service. Tandy Computers, in business, for business. Tandy, clearly superior. Duke, balanced and winner of 21 straight. Louisville, confident and on a roll. The NCAA Basketball Championship tomorrow night on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Install a smoke alarm where you live. Building safety is no accident. This life safety message is brought to you by your local building official and the International Conference of Building Officials. We interrupt this International House of Pancakes commercial with another commercial, one for our new London broil, new golden chicken, new stuffed potato skins, new sautéed fish, and new stir-fried vegetable omelet. It's our new after 4 p.m. dinner menu. And right now, get our 21 shrimp special. 21 golden shrimp with natural cut potatoes and fresh fruit, just $3.99 at your International House of Pancakes. 1986 Women's NCAA National Championship Game is sponsored by Yamaha. We make the difference. Back at halftime with Texas leading at the halfway mark, and we have with us two coaches, Joan Bombasini, who is the head coach of Cal State Fullerton, and Pat Summit, the head coach of Tennessee. And Pat, she was in the Final Four. Let me have your analysis of the first half. Well, I think the big difference has been on the boards. I think that Texas has done a great job controlling the boards. They've only given Southern Cal one shot. And the other thing, I think the bench. Most people think that Texas might have the best team in the country on the bench, and they do have a great basketball team coming off the bench. Joe, and I introduced you wrong. I got your name right. I've been practicing Bombasini all year, but it's Cal State Long Beach. It's right. down at Cal State Fullerton. What are your thoughts about the first half? Well, I think Cheryl Miller needs to get the ball more, and she needs to be more selfish. She's been so unselfish in the first half, but as Pat said, it's he is rebounding. I also think that they are very stagnant in their half-court offense, and they need to get more movement on offense, and they need to get more point production from other players, especially Sherry Nelson. She's been putting the ball on the floor too much, and I think she needs to be much more involved. Well, Mimi Griffin is the other part of our broadcast team. I'm really surrounded with talent here today. She has some thoughts on some other stars in women's basketball. Shortly, women's basketball will say goodbye to many fine seniors, players who have made an impact on team and fan alike. We'll miss classy Teresa Edwards, the All-American and Olympic gold medalist from Georgia, and Wanda Ford of Drake, and of course, the great CM. But new stars will emerge, and here's just a few.
Mercedes-Benz was building sports sedans before there was such a term as sports sedan. Experience pays. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class. The heart of a sports sedan. The soul of a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class. Something more than a sports sedan. Nothing less than a Mercedes-Benz. AT&T is in customer satisfaction. Our people help Pillsbury design a feedback line using AT&T 800 service. Can I freeze the cupcakes? I 500 calls come in every day, which makes Pillsbury very happy because satisfied customers come back for more. We can help your business in ways you never thought of. AT&T Long Distance Services. Talk with us. AT&T, the right choice. Winning, it's easy. Give 110%, expect 110%. From yourself, everyone, everything. Speed Stick deodorant gives 110%. That's its edge. Why? It has no alcohol, and alcohol evaporates. Speed Stick protection doesn't evaporate even after 24 hours. Glides on in just a few strokes. That's 110% protection. Speed Stick deodorant, the wide stick. That's your edge. By Menon. The fastest runners in the United States were my teammates. And to be motivated to run against them every day, knowing that if you were not your very best, that you could stand to lose at any time, was something to behold on a team like uh, the Tiger Belt of Tennessee State University. Athletics played uh, a big part of the decision for me to go to college. Uh, I, as a young girl coming from this very large, wonderful family of 22 children, uh, being the first of the 22 to go to college, it was very important that uh, I get there. I didn't have the slightest idea how we go to college because we had no money. But then athletics popped up. Without the athletics, uh, I would not have obtained the education. And without uh, uh, the education part, I would not be able to do the things that I do now. This message furnished by the NCAA. Texas by 10 at the halfway point, 45-35. Let's go back in history now, women's basketball. A remarkable story in the 70s. Let's look at it. By the early 1970s, Bill Walton and company had firmly established UCLA as one of sports' greatest dynasties. And the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden, was college basketball's king. But 3,000 miles away, just outside of Philadelphia, a tiny Catholic college named Immaculata was quietly building a reputation of its own. The architect was Kathy Rush, and her teams were so successful that lofty comparisons were inevitable. From 72 through 74, the Mighty Max rolled over the best. Their run and gun offense produced 35 straight wins and three consecutive national titles. I think the impact that Immaculata had was different than the impact that UCLA had because of the timing. We were pioneers. We were, were limited financially. And UCLA sort of came in the middle of the history of men's basketball. Three pioneers have remained prominent today in women's basketball. Rene Muth at Penn State. Mary Ann Crawford coaches Old Dominion. And Teresa Shank leads Rutgers. And even when on opposite ends of the court, they agree on what made Immaculata great. The team itself was very smart, obviously, and we were very, very patient, and we knew we were drilled well. We practiced double sessions before anybody even heard about some double sessions, and Kathy Rush made us do an awful lot to be the champions. We all were individuals who were highly motivated, uh, willing to sacrifice and, and do anything to reach our goals, and uh, we're doing that at a time when it wasn't necessarily the traditional thing to do, and, and that's a great source of pride for me. Not much about the Mighty Max was traditional, from their publicity to their fans. An unusual collection of parents, friends, and nuns who followed the team religiously. They called themselves a bucket brigade and wore their school spirit like a badge of honor. You know, I'm not a basketball player. I never missed a game. I couldn't tell you about good things about a particular play and so on. But I was up there booing at the refs and cheering on the good calls, you know. Uh, and I think we were all there. Just, it just gave us a whole new dimension in our, our life. And I, I think about giving to others, well, that was the time when we were receiving. I was so impressed because here were people who had certainly dedicated their lives to the service of others, and yet 
my mind playing basketball was just such a trivial thing and being part of that whole thing I was able to bring such excitement and joy to someone else's life they're very good friends because I think they're very special people and I think when Immaculata basketball that's what I think of a special team the mighty max of Immaculata College <laughs> Here at Hewlett Packard, we believe that the best way to solve your business computing problem is to make it our problem. Because we know that whatever system we design for your company, we're going to live with it too. We never stop asking, what if? Wait a minute. They have this incredible backlog of data requests. You're right. What if we use the... His name's Lightning. When you want a loan, most banks work at a slow trot. But someone can put you in the saddle. Hop on! The boss at Beneficial. Hi, I'm Carol. Our manager can get you a Beneficial credit line account, usually in 24 hours. The money you want for the things you want. And that was fast. Fast as lightning. You bet. Beneficial. Talk to the manager, and you're talking to the boss. Night, lights, rain. You know the feeling, wondering if you could stop if you had to. But now there's Arcot, Bridgestone's surprising Arcot S371 radio. A tire that doesn't compromise in mileage or performance or stopping power. There's never been a tire like it. Arcot, patented by Bridgestone, where new ideas take hold. Call 1-800-453-9000. is a revolutionary advancement in shaving from Gillette Research. The brush Gillette announces Brush Plus. A shaving concentrate and brush in one. A brush to lift your whiskers with the soothing warmth only a brush can give you. A concentrate with extra softeners and lubricants that are massaged deep into your beard. Or a shave that is superior. Brush Plus from Gillette for a superior shave. I don't know what I'd do without my teammates and coaches to support me. So often we're pressured by others to do things we really don't want to, like drugs and drinking. I feel fortunate to have friends who back me up when I say no. Sometimes it's not easy to say no, but at all times it's important to say no to drugs and no to irresponsible drinking. With my friends behind me, I've got a lot of good times ahead. You will too, if you can stand up to the pressure. After all, you can't be a hit when you're high. Something to think about from the NCAA. The Lady Longhorns with a 10-point, half-point lead, 45-35 over USC. And let's analyze this first half, Mimi Griffin. One thing is very evident, USC not doing a good job in the rebounding department. No, they're not at all. The deficit is 10 rebounds for Texas over USC right now. The rebounding is important because Texas is able to run their transition game off their rebounds. I think one of the big stories is Cheryl Miller. It's always a big story when she plays, and she is really having a difficult time shooting from the field. One of the things I don't understand, Gary, early on they had Cheryl posted low, and it was very effective for them. Now, all of a sudden, she's playing perimeter basketball. She's taking 15 to 20-foot shots off of picks, and the only reason she has any, not any points, but one of the main reasons is because of the foul she's able to draw. They need her inside, both scoring-wise and rebounding-wise. I thought Cammy Etheridge had a good first half. Yeah, Cammie Etheridge had a great first half. One of the surprising statistics that I noticed, she has five rebounds. She's one of the leading rebounders in the first half. She has eight assists, which is her game average. And then the bench of Kara Pretty coming off doing such a good job. CBS Sports coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. is also the biggest bargain airline. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, United Airlines announces low fares to more of this land than anybody. All brought to you by yours truly, Eddie Hummo. 
Oh. Low fares with full service to over 150 cities coast to coast. You're not just flying, you're flying the friendly skies. This is CBS. Special guest host Gladys Knight welcomes Boy George with Culture Club and Barry Manilow on Solid Gold. Solid Gold, tonight at 10.30 on Channel 7. Always leaving home to play sports isn't easy. That's why so many Austin families have a sport court in their backyard. When family and friends gather on a sport court, there are no schedules to juggle, no reservations to make. You'll be having fun and getting the exercise you need right at home in your own backyard. So call Sport Court today and let them build some fun into your home. Basketball, volleyball, paddle tennis, and more. You'll join the lineup for family fun. And everybody gets into the act. 1986 Women's NCAA National Championship Game is sponsored by Nissan, who invites you to test drive the all-new Nissan truck hard bodies at your Nissan Datsun dealer now. Sears. And by Michelob Light, super premium taste and less filling beer. But again, the second half, we talked about one of the trademarks of Texas, their bench. And look at the people involved offensively. Davis leading the way, but Harris and Williams with eight. USC led by Miller, and we mentioned most of that coming from the free throw line. That first half, USC shot only 36%. On the other hand, 65.5 from the field for Texas. That's because most of USC's shots have been perimeter shots and not good shot selection in the first half for them. Let's see if they turn that around here in the second half early. Cynthia Cooper had a struggling first half. She was 4 of 10 from the field. They need her to get back in offensively. There she is with the ball. Nelson is in after picking up those three fouls in the first half. She's the pivot, number 32, and she has the ball now. And that was a very good run play, very well run play. And Ford then, on the rebound, comes out and hits it. But that's what you need to start second half is call a play, run it well, and USC did. That is a good sign because not only did they run the play correctly, but they got the ball inside, which is where they're going to have to score from there. And there is the outside part of that Texas attack. Fran Harris hitting from outside, back to a 10-point lead. For the national championship, USC and Texas. Texas 33-0, USC 31-4, ranked third at the end of the season. Texas top ranked for the beginning of the season. Into Cheryl Miller, and it's going to be a foul on Cheryl. And that is her third foul. She doesn't like that call at all. One of the adjustments I expect to see USC doing in this second half is to getting, getting the ball into Cheryl inside more. This is an example of that. But her body control, Andy Lloyd, had great positioning and drew the offensive foul. She's pleading her case at the other end. Well, they have her inside, though. That's what she thought they should be doing, is move her inside instead of outside. Well, that's how they were so effective in the first half, both scoring-wise and rebounding. Cheryl had one rebound in the first half. That's not right. That's not good for this USC team. USC now playing the zone. Neither one of these teams really are known for their zones. They like to play that man-to-man -man pressure, but a change here by the women of Troy. There's the foul difficulty now. Miller with three. Nelson had three in the first half. Lloyd and Smith. But again, Texas, even though they picked up many more fouls in that first half, you figure they can spread them out and might not get in as much difficulty. Well, with Texas's depth, the foul situation really doesn't affect them as much as it will in USC. Grant Harris has hit two in a row in the second half. 49-37, biggest lead of the game for Texas. man-to-man -man pressure on and again I, I would expect to see USC try to go inside the paint or inside the key area more this second half. Cynthia Cooper forces a shot and Ed Smith comes down the rebound and Nelson had a hand on it stopped the break it'll still be Texas basketball. Linda Sharp making the adjustments but right now she's still down by 12. This zone that USC is in, this 2-3 zone, is probably designed to stop Texas's inside game, which was so effective the first half. However, you've got Fran Harris to worry about and Beverly Williams on the tournament. Clarissa Davis. And Clarissa Davis. Yeah, don't forget Clarissa. In the first half, she was 4 of 5 for the field. She now has 11 points in this game. You're going to hear her name. She's going to be a household name by the time she gets out of school. And we have a pushing foul away from the ball. Now that, that was kind of a crazy call because Cheryl Miller was coming off of 
Cami Etheridge, the Texas player. And she tripped over Cami uh, Etheridge's foot. And the foul was called on Annette Smith, who I don't believe was anywhere near the play. Well, that's what I'm wondering. That would be her fourth foul, though. Well, it's in officially as her fourth foul. I'm with you, Mimi. I did not see it. Here is Wyndham now, who has not had an offensive display thus far. In it goes. Nelson. And Sherry Nelson was effective in that first half where she got into foul difficulty. It's the inside where they've got to attack. And as you mentioned, the foul difficulty is what's going to be key here. If Cheryl Miller or Sherry Nelson gets in trouble, USC can't pull it, pull it out from perimeter shooting. 51-39, Texas. Davis working inside against that zone. Travel to the ball. Kale Hemphill will come back in for Texas. And uh, Smith will set down after committing that fourth foul. This Kay Hemphill into the game. This is one of Jody Conrad's energizers, as she called them earlier. Kay Hemphill for Texas, number 22. Cynthia Cooper with some pressure from Beverly Williams. Beverly Williams uh, did not play well in the first half of the game Friday, and so Jody Conrad just benched her for about the first 10 minutes of the second half. You know, it wasn't that she wasn't playing well, it's that she wasn't rebounding well, and Jody is spoiled, she said, by her offensive rebounding. If she doesn't live up to that, Beverly sits down. Miller really frustrated. She had an easy shot inside. It didn't go. They do have the basketball, and that kind of epitomizes the struggle for the women of Troy. Cooper inside, and another miss. And we're going to have a foul on Beverly Williams. USC has had shot after shot inside, Mimi. Easy shots that just don't drop for them. I think the problem, Gary, again, their half-court offense is not working well. We see a lot of individual play, a lot of one-on-one -on -one moves, but no real teamwork here. They've got to start using their teamwork to open up some opportunities for them. That was the third foul on Beverly Williams. 16.55 to go. Holly Ford, she's an excellent shooter, and another foul. Boy, we have a bunch of fouls here in this game. It's pretty coming back in. That is Hemphill's third foul. And I tell you what, uh, Jody may have to send for some more <laughs> Lady Longhorns back there in Austin to finish this game. She might also have to look for another technical in the second half to straighten the refs out like she did the first half. She did that. She exactly did that. As Mimi referred to the first half, she worked the officials and started to change their calls. There's another miss inside. USC has had a good percentage shots, but they can't get them in. 51-39. Here's Cammy intended baseline. Davis Pretty is there, and Pretty is a story in this game. That's being in the right place at the right time. That pass was not to Kara Pretty, but heads-up play on her part resulted in two points. Cooper with some good ball handling. Gets it out to Rhonda Wyndham. Wyndham has really been non-existent offensively. They need some offense from her. She was one of three from the field in the first half. Now she's trying to crank it up, and that would help. She is fouled as the basket will count. These fouls are just piling up. That's going to be on Etheridge. It's only her first. USC really needs someone to spark them. And here's a shot by Rhonda Windham that just might do that. She gets the shot, the two points, and the foul shot as well. So Etheridge, the only one really that hadn't been in the foul column for this Texas team, committing her first. And Windham at the line. She gets the three-point play. 53-42, Texas. A little trapping pressure now from USC. Van Harris brings it across. You know, Gary, this is almost an instant replay of their regular season game. USC was down by 10 and a half, went down by almost 16 in the second half, and then hung on to that deficit and lost by 16. Etheridge will pop one from outside. Rebounded, Davis. And we're going to have a foul, and it's going to be on Miller, and that is four on Shower Miller, and the superstar may have to come out of the ball game with 15.55 left. Cheryl Miller is not happy about this call. Look at the pass, or rather the shot inside. Look at the positioning by the Texas players. Good rebounding positioning. Where in the world did they get a foul out of that? Where's the verticality come in on that? I'll tell you what, though. That's almost a payback call because that's exactly what Cheryl did in the first half, and she got the foul called as well. Well, you don't want to have your superstar sitting on the bench if you're USC, or for that matter, if you're interested in women's basketball. You want to see her play, but now with four fouls, she's out with over 15, almost 16 minutes to go in this game. There she is, and she is obviously very upset. Gary, don't count this USC team out, though. They have played in four regular season games this year without Cheryl because of injuries and have won all four of them. They, they weren't playing around. Texas, though, Mimi. <laughs> okay, that, okay, I'll, I'll give you that point. <laughs> Coming down to the rebound is Cooper. Wyndham. 
and she just overpassed the ball. She had a shot. Instead, tried to get a little greedy, went inside, and Pretty came up with a steal. Here's Beverly Williams at the other end. And we're going to have another foul on, this time, Fran Harris. That will be the second on Harris. With Miller out of the ball game, Amy, what changes do you have to make offensively? What do you what can you do? I think their game plan should remain the same. They have to go inside. This time Sherry Nelson with Cheryl Miller on, on the bench and use your perimeter scoring from a Hal number 10 or a Cooper. Because they're both very capable for the perimeter. Wind a lot more active in this second half. She needs to be. She's got to run their transition game and also their half court game. There is Nelson and she traveled with the ball and again give Pretty a lot of credit. She was just absolutely not and let her back in. Kara Pretty knows she is playing well. She's had a smile on her face since the time she first made the basket in the first half. It's interesting in a championship game how somebody just seems to come out of nowhere to become a very integral part of the win. Of course, you expected this one. Gary, I'll tell you what, right now, you can see it on USC's face. They need a timeout. They're tired. They're down now, and they've got to get a rest. And, and Linda Sharp should consider a timeout at this point. You saw the rebounds. Texas, obviously, with the advantage there. Well, you've got Cheryl Miller on the bench. Texas has this game going their way, and... Right now, USC losing some poise along with being tired as Etheridge comes up with a steal. That's eight turnovers now against USC. Baseline, Fran Harris, and rebound followed by Davis, and she saves it into Harris. And right now, Texas is on a roll. USC needs a timeout. They've got to have a timeout. There is momentum on Texas' side, and USC has got to regroup. Regroup might be an understatement. Ladies from Troy are in trouble. Who says you can't have 100% imported hops and a less filling beer? Old world aging and a less filling beer. Smooth, super premium taste and a less filling beer. Michelob Light, the best of both worlds. Michelob Light, oh yes you can. Have it all. When you buy a Nissan 300ZX, you buy a legend. A tradition of many Z cars. Each meticulously made to the tolerance of an expensive watch. You buy a racing heritage unmatched by any car in its class. But most of all, when you buy a 300ZX, you buy Nissan. For this car expresses what we believe a quality sports car should be. Awesome. The name is Nissan. This 16-year-old may soon find herself on death row. How old do you have to be to be executed? In one state, the age limit is 10. Tonight on CBS. Texas playing like the top-ranked team that they are with a 58-42 advantage. The All-American team announced uh, this weekend. Here are some of the members who have played so well as they've had a very busy week in Lexington here in the bluegrass country. Cindy Brown, Teresa Edwards, Cammie Etheridge, who's playing in this ball game, Wanda Ford. Continuing on, Cheryl Miller, of course, you expect her to be in there. Lily Mason saw her play Friday. Great open court player. Sue Wicks out of Rutgers. Congratulations to that group. And right now, congratulations are in order for Texas. They are playing an outstanding basketball game. This is the Texas team that I've seen so many times this season playing right on top of their game. Cynthia Cooper and her shot has just failed her today. Nelson has done some tough work inside. She gets the follow. Now there's one of the adjustments that USC must make and seems like they are. Going inside, getting the shots, and also paying more attention to offensive boards. Etheridge just gets it out of the pack, and then Cooper comes up with a steal, and Cooper forces the shot, and we're going to have a foul. It's going to go on Cammy Etheridge. There is an example of another adjustment USC must make. They've got to start putting more pressure full court on Texas. And we're going to have a timeout. Timeout is called. 13:47. USC trying to put the pieces back together. It's been all Texas. This weekend, I'm seeing Ronda. I got the Camaro. I'm seeing the folks, so... 
I got a Shabbat. My sister's in town this weekend with their kids. You need a big car. For just the right car, ask National for their low weekend rates, starting as low as $21.95 a day for an economy car like the Chevrolet Chevette. For my class reunion. The Cadillac. Weekends, it pays to get national attention. An idea doesn't conform to a 9 to 5 schedule. <laughs> So at Hewlett Packard, we're always thinking. Because even though we sell business computing systems, what? what we really do is solve problems. We never stop asking, what if? Jim, Mike, I've got an idea on that branch office network. What if we connect all the things? USC trying to get back in this, trapped very well on Tammy Etheridge. This is one of the adjustments Coach Linda Sharp made in that first timeout. They have got to put more pressure full court on Texas, and it works here. Tammy Etheridge is a veteran, yet they first time to make you a bad pass. Well, Linda Sharp made that adjustment, but I thought Jody Conrad had a very strategic timeout. That was definitely strategic, Gary, because she doesn't want the pressure of USC now to affect this Texas team. They've got a good lead. She wants them to keep their calm and control the game as they have since the first half. Cynthia Cooper, who's the emotional leader of this team, the spark plug, trying to bring him back. She's forced a couple of shots. This last one she was fouled on. She cuts it to 58-45. USC without Cheryl Miller, who has four fouls. Let's see if they can come after him again with this full court pressure. Again, the adjustment of the full court pressure. Let's see how Texas adjusts to the pressure. Cammy this time handled it very well. Got it off to Clarissa Davis. I think the point to be made there is that Cammy got rid of the ball before the trap was set. There's Davis. Spinning move. One of the things USC is not doing is they're not stopping Texas's inside game. They have to do that. And Cheryl Miller can't stop anybody right now as she awaits the point when she can return on the bench with four fouls. They're going to have to look to Cynthia Cooper, who has the ball now, number 44, to really spark them offensively. Nelson double teamed. Harris comes up with a rebound. They trap her, and she drives out of it. Out of South Oak Cliff High School in Dallas. They call her Otto for automatic because she is such an effective shooter from outside. When they went to the zone, I think she probably started salivating. She knew she had all kinds of shots coming. There's a beautiful pass from Harris to Freddie. This Texas team is so balanced. It doesn't matter who has their hands on the ball. Everyone is capable of scoring and getting the assist. Cynthia Cooper, well, she just can't get it to go. It's just not there today. But there it's thrown away, but the chase and Davis showing her speed. you got to love that athletic ability. It's incredible to watch. You can see why Jody Conrad says she is the prototype player of the future. She is the future of women's basketball. Cheryl Miller, frustrated, pensive, and very, very worried. you have in life. When Dean Witter helps plan your investments, you're treated special. Everybody is somebody at Dean Witter. A member of the Sears Financial Network. Who says you can't have it all? Who says you can't love your work and the change your face? Who says you can't have light beer with super premium taste? Make a low light. Oh yes, For premium taste and a less filling beer. Kentucky, the site of the championship game in 1986, the women's championship, and Texas is really playing well. And here is an example of how they've been playing. Clarissa Davis just absolutely tracked this one down and ran by Holly Ford. You can see Fran Harris's eyes get big. She saw Clarissa Davis out ahead of the pack. Look at the reaction on Clarissa Davis. Is she having a good time? Well, look at the bench scoring. And Clarissa has 18 of those 33. Pretty with nine. 
I don't think we're surprised by Clarissa Davis, but Pretty is a surprise. Kara Pretty's only averaging 4.5 points a game, and for her to come into a championship game and score like this, as well as play the kind of defense she has, I've said it all day long, it's a bonus for Texas. With Miller out of the lineup, Texas has outscored USC 12 to 4. Miller has not scored in the second half. She had 16 in the first, sitting on the sideline with four. Holly Brown, and he, she really has a beautiful shot. Good rotation on the ball. Must have learned that from her brother Don, huh? <laughs> I think she probably learned it herself, Gary. <laughs> Holly Ford does have an excellent shot. She needs to be scoring more in this second half if they have any hopes of getting back into this game. 64-48. I don't think Don shoots as well as she does. He was a banger, a defensive player. 12 minutes left in this game. Here's Pretty. She's got the hot hand. And she's trying to go for 10 and 11 there. And Nelson saved it. Nope, she did not. I think she stepped out. Look at that. USC has only one timeout left with that much time remaining. Even if they are able to bring the deficit closer, they need those timeouts strategically. Here comes Cheryl Miller there. And Harris missing and tried to follow, commits a foul, and as you mentioned, here comes CM, now let's Cheryl see, Miller. let's see if Texas goes right at Cheryl and tries to get her out of the game right away. You know, she's fouled out, what, once this year? I think that's right, only one time. And so it'll be interesting to see if she can play with four, with still 11.49 left in this game. She's talking to each one of her teammates right now, trying to let them know what needs to be done. They need a teamwork effort here. It can't be an individual effort. And if Cheryl tries to do that, she'll be out of this game with her fifth foul. She's meant so much to the sport and to the United States. She was on that gold medal winning team in Los Angeles, two national championships, four-time All-American, second ever in the history of this game, and Myers is the other. And that is going to be... Whose basketball is it? Now, wait a minute. Bob Olson's going to confer with his uh, partner out there, and they're going to award the ball to USC. A little discussion going on there. First, he pointed Texas's way. I think Linda Sharp, the USC coach, not only wanted a foul, but at least the ball out of bounds. And to Holly Ford, she'll bring it out to Cooper. 64-48. Texas, 11-42 left. This is for the title. Cheryl Miller, a scoreless in the second half. Can't get that one. Pretty gets a rebound. Looks like Cheryl might try to do it all herself, at least offensively down there. Let's see how poised she is on defense. That's going to be key. Boy, it must be frustrating for her to have such a great career and to have such a difficult afternoon. Here's Beverly Williams. She just moved it in beautifully. Very smart move, and she had an easy jump shot. It seems like they're playing some kind of junk defense, like a diamond and one with the one on Fran Harris to prevent her from scoring outside. Sure didn't bother Williams, did it? No, it's certainly Here is Nelson and Pretty. Made it a tough shot at best, but Nelson now with 11 points. Sherry's played a strong game. Here comes Williams. Williams has just great feet. Look at that pass to Pretty. Williams does some things out there. In fact, Conrad's saying she doesn't know how good she is sometimes. She is so good, and this transition game, Gary, is so good. There's Cooper on the move. USC, though, cannot trade baskets. They've got to start making some inroads on this deficit. They trail 68-52, 10 and a half to go. Gary, USC is tired. They can't put the pressure on full court the way they need to to be able to cut this deficit. They're getting the ball inside beautifully. Miller comes out with a rebound. Here she comes. She'll pull it out. Off it goes to Holly Ford, and Ford gets it. Now, here is the beginnings, maybe, of a comeback. USC able to convert two baskets in a hurry, and here comes Williams to the other end. Etheridge into Davis. Spinning move on Nelson. Nelson, good defense on the play. Miller with the rebound. Cheryl's trying somehow to bring this team back. Nice pass to Cooper. And all of a sudden, the women of Troy have cut it to 12 at the other end and you talk about an action-packed game going from baseline to baseline and Williams is exhausted as she gets up that'll be a foul on Williams by the way her fourth Cheryl Miller came in and really sparked this team offensively and defensively she's not trying to do it all offensively as I mentioned earlier she dished off there wisely for the for the transition basket she just might be able to bring this team back, Gary. Well, the basket did count, but it was a foul on Williams, her fourth. It's 70-56 as Nelson will go to the line. One of the 
things that Texas is allowing USC to do right now is get into their transition. We haven't seen USC's transition since the beginning of this game. Now, all of a sudden, with this comeback, there it is again. Well, you wonder. I thought you made a good point. Can USC have enough stamina to stay at this tempo, even though they would like to run? No, if they start running back and forth with the full court pressure they have to put on, this Texas team isn't even breathing hard. Jerry Nelson gets both free throws to go. That's it back to 12 again with 9.51. Tammy Etheridge, such superb shape. She's been a triathlete. In fact, quite a story about her. On the bicycle end of it, she was able to ride a bicycle nine miles with a flat tire to finish. And here is Andrea Lloyd. She forced the shot. Miller bringing it out. Three on one. Beautiful pass to Cooper. Texas needs a timeout, Gary. It's a 10-point game. It's a 10-point game. Texas has got to get a timeout here. USC has just snatched the momentum right away from them. Look who is responsible for it. Cheryl Miller is coming on and coming on strong. There was Look a foul on team. this also. I did not spot it initially, but Fran Harris was whistled for a foul. Here comes Miller. It's Miller time as she gets it off to Cooper. And they call a foul on Harris at the end of the play. Her fourth. It is an automotive advance whose time has come. The Mercedes-Benz Supplemental Restraint System, SRS. In a severe frontal impact, a driver's side airbag and emergency tensioning retractors in both front seat belts supplement three-point seat belt restraint. All in a fraction of a second. SRS. Only from Mercedes-Benz. And now standard equipment on every Mercedes-Benz for 1986. Dear, beloved Uncle Dwight. He certainly had a lot of friends. The Pruitts drove all the way from Alaska. What? Alaska. Oh, Alaska. I counted license plates from 18 different states. Hey, Earl, what kind of motor oil do you use? Motor oil is motor oil. What? Motor oil is motor oil. Oh, yes, he is. Motor oil definitely is not motor oil. Four-cylinder cars work harder and need specially formulated Valvoline 4 guard. Don't drive your car to an early grave. Hey, Texas led by 18 in the second half, been cut to 10, and one of the major reasons is Cheryl Miller. She hasn't scored, but she's done everything else. She's had three assists and four rebounds since returning from the bench. She's really lighting up their offense. The one concern I would have at this point, Cheryl Miller got a rest because she sat out for so long. Can the rest of her players run with her this entire second half with, with 9.30 to go? And remember, Cheryl playing with four fouls at the free throw line as Cooper completes a three-point play, and this is the closest they've been in a long time. Nine. What a great comeback. It looked like Texas is going to put the lid on this one, and all of a sudden, Miller comes in, and it becomes a different game almost instantaneously. Look at the way Miller is also playing health defense right now. She's doing it all. And remember, with four fouls, the thing she can't do is foul out right now as Lloyd will kick it out to Etheridge. Good defense by the women of Troy. There's Harris. Bad shot, but it's rebounded by Etheridge. Lucky break for the Lady Longhorns. Off it comes to Lloyd. Left-handed shot inside Wimpish. And that'll count, and she's fouled. That's key for Texas, and I'll tell you why. Because although the momentum shifted to USC, they're still doing fundamental things correctly. Rebounding position is key, and this is what Yolanda, Yolanda Wimbish did right here. The shot goes up by Andy Lloyd. Good shot. Look at the position Wimbish has. She takes it back up strong without hesitation. That's Boy, fundamental basketball. Mimi, that is such a momentum stopper. You're coming back, and they get chance after chance. And finally come away now with possibly a three-point play. No, Wimbish missed it. A foul was on Cooper Moore. Goes, Sir, we have a lane violation against Cheryl Miller, so she'll be able to shoot another free throw. But when you really put out such great effort and you cut it down, that is just a, it just knocks you flat when you have that many opportunities to score. Well, I'll tell you what, each of these players has 8 minutes and 53 seconds left in this season. I don't think they're going to let the... Well, I would hope that they wouldn't let being tired stop them, but sometimes it has to. You just run out of gas. The mind is willing, but the body won't go sometimes, huh? 73-61. Here's Cheryl trying to create something. Very tough shot. Doesn't go for it. Andre Lloyd kicks it down. Etheridge is by herself. Now, that is not the kind of shot Cheryl Miller wants to take. That's what we saw her doing earlier. She doesn't want to force a shot like that. Continue to do what she did when she first came back into the game. Pass off. Create offensive opportunities. Miller has not scored in the second half. She had 16 in the first half. 
Here is Nelson, and she walked with the ball. Kara Pretty, you can't say enough about Kara Pretty. She is having the game of her life. If she's a senior, it's the last game of her career. What a nice way to end. The enforcer, and she certainly has enforced her defensive play. Lloyd at the 8.05 mark to Pretty. And a foul will go on Karen Howe. Howe coming around from behind, committing her first. Karen Howe out of Portland, we mentioned, the deadly perimeter shooter who has had some outstanding games, and they're going to need her outside shooting if they're going to come back in this one. I think the reason she has been relatively quiet tonight is this Texas pressure defense does not allow an outside shot without at least two hands, maybe four hands in your face. Well, that's an appropriate graphic over an appropriate picture. The bench and what it's done. That's something. But that's, that, that's exactly what's happened all year long, though. We shouldn't right. be surprised. It's, it's their depth, and everyone contributes. They've got four or five players in double figures for the year. You know, the interesting thing was Jody said, I wasn't convinced we could establish the depth until about the middle of December. She became comfortable with the fact that she could go that deep. Well, one of the things Jody hasn't been comfortable with herself is substituting so much. She's never done that in her 10-year career at Texas. Andrea Lloyd, five points. Lloyd hasn't scored that much, but certainly has played a very impressive game with that bad knee and all. And Jody was talking about the fact that she hasn't been able to practice a lot because of the knee. It's hurt her conditioning and her quickness, but she's looked awfully good today. Jody called Andy Lloyd the best player that hasn't been named All-American. That's right. And Wimbish is fouled by Miller, and that's all for Cheryl. That's it. That's her it. career is over, and what... A disappointing way for it to end. You're going to see a lot of respect right now, Gary, from the fans in this arena as well as the players on the floor. A standing ovation. So a 7-23, a Millerless team. Somehow going to have to try to pull this one out. 77-61, Lloyd, underhand shovel, and another foul. Let's go back to this fifth and final foul that ended the career of the finest woman to play this game. Not a smart, not a smart move, really, on Cheryl's part. In the open floor, that's not where you want to get your fifth foul. Maybe fighting for a rebound or going in for a shot, but not on the open floor like that. But she's diving for the ball just as she's done the entire four years at USC. She never gives up. The intensity is there every second she's in the game. Well, there's a lot of talk about her future, what she wants to do as a model. She's been in the radio television business, working at USC for a degree there, and obviously uh, very, very disappointed. She really almost brought this team back and doing things that you said she needed to. And then again, she fell right back into what she was doing wrong in that first half and fouled out. That's right. That The one outside shot that she forced, and then it just took her completely out of what she started to do for this team. A little over seven minutes to go. And Texas is trying to cap off an undefeated season. Cynthia Cooper has played a much stronger second half. Tough shot. Able to get it to go. Now, Texas can't let down. This is an important point to make right now. This is not over for Texas. They've got to continue to play the way they've played for the first half and the beginning of this second half. 20 points for Cooper. Boy, this is a physically demanding game. Here's Etheridge on the move. And they're going to track down a foul. Looks like Sherry Nelson, and that would be four on Nelson. Etheridge getting up very slowly. She is shaken up. We mentioned Cammy and uh, her triathlon experience and riding on that flat tire. And she talked about the fact that, you know, there's been an awful lot of pressure this year. That sometimes it hasn't been as enjoyable being number one all year long and people expecting so much. Look at the kind of day she's had today. Look at the rebounds. She's a point guard, Gary. She's got six rebounds and nine assists, which is... Well, well I think above it, her average for an entire game. Mimi, I think it speaks well to be an All-American and only average five points a game. That shows you what she contributes in other areas. Well, you know, Cammy was a scorer in high school, and she had to completely change her role when she came to Texas. They asked her to run the show, not necessarily scoring offensively, but just directing everyone else. She gets her role. 
three-time All-Southwest Conference as Cheryl Miller looks on and has to be going through all types of emotions right now. They talk about Cammie's being an extension of Jody. In other words, she absolutely <laughs> is her alter ego out there, does the things that Jody uh, says I don't even have to tell her about. And there is another foul, and it's going to go on Cooper, who thought she had a clean block. She rocketed that one back, didn't she? That's four on Cynthia. She's looking for a little bit of assist there from the other ref. She can't believe it. We're going to have to check the totals on fouls in this game. We, uh, is there a record for fouls in the, in the women's basketball game? Menu? I'm a rookie here. you got to help me out. If there is, I don't know about it, Gary. <laughs> we may be approaching it. Here's Clarissa Davis. 79-64. You know, you look at Clarissa Davis, and you if you were Jody Conrad, you've got to be excited about next year's possibilities. Wow. Well, everybody said, can Texas win the big one? I think they're going to put that aside. They were ranked number one the last three years, but not able to get to the final four the last two. And there were people saying, hey, they do well in the regular season. What happens to tournament play? Well, they're putting that behind them right now. Holly Ford on a pass from Cooper, and Cooper playing with four fouls very aggressively, kept it alive to Wyndham. And we're going to have a foul over the back. Holly Ford. That's three on Holly. USC is getting shots. They just can't buy a bucket right now. And so we'll go to the other end with 6.16 left. This game has changed so much, Mimi. We talked about Clarissa being the prototype, the future of this game. Uh, one of the things she does, for instance, that she's not just coming down the rebound. She's taking them right up to score. You're seeing uh, better defensive play, uh, the quickness. Uh, I think Jody Conrad said it very well. We've had to do things better in every area because we can't get away some of the things we used to. That's right. One of the things that hurt them last year is they were very inflexible in their game plan. You, you know you would expect from a Texas team full court press, pressure defense, as well as a running offense. This year, she's thrown some different looks in it. We saw that Friday night with Western Kentucky. She did not press full court for the first time in her 10-year career in Texas. 82-64, as Cooper will try one from outside, just doesn't go. Here comes Cammy. She may do a little creating here. Yes, sir, off it goes. Beautiful pass to Wimpish. We kind of expected Kathy to, to Katie to do something different there, but Cammy, I should say, because she's always got that behind-the-back pass in the back of her mind. Remember the one she had earlier this year? You could almost hear this crowd just taking a breath, waiting to see what Cammy would come up with. And there is Rhonda Wyndham at the other end connecting. 84-66. There's the time remaining in the ball game. to Pretty, and Pretty backs in, and rebound Davis. Karen Howe will bring it down. Nice lead pass to Cooper. Again, USC at moments has really run the break effectively. Cooper now with 22 points. They just can't keep it up because of the, they are just so tired right now. The full court pressure, you can see Ronda Wyndham just jogging down the floor. There's Pretty, and she's in double figures. Who is that girl? <laughs> He has really been a surprise story in this game. I know Coach Conrad has got to be happy with Kara's performance today because she just thinks Kara works harder than anybody and is glad to see it pay off. And she's leaving now. Kara Pretty leaves as Annette Smith comes in to replace her. There she is. What a way for her to end her career with 15 points in this game and outstanding defensive effort inside. She has really been tough. With all the work that this Texas team puts in day in and day out for the past four years, it's a tremendous way to end the year. Pays off for all that hard work. Now on a behind-the-back reach-in attempt, commits the fouls, Hemphill comes in. There's Kara Pretty, the one that you were talking about. On the other end, it's, um, it's not as happy a bench, and certainly Cheryl Miller would like to have ended her career in a different manner. Not just individually, but of course team-wise too. One of the points I'd like to make about Cheryl, especially the second half of this season, that speaks to the maturity of her as a player. She's really started to include the rest of her teammates in the game, and that's why they were so successful. She included them in every way, scoring, passing, rebounding, 
And because of that, they're here in the final game today. But it must be frustrating when it is a freshman and sophomore and then not even get to the final four as a junior and then get to the final game and not be able to win. Wyndham on the break. Don't forget, immediately following this, final round coverage of the TPC. 419 left in it. Are you surprised? No, we talked earlier. I think I, I think I predicted this. You did, and the interesting thing to me is, is that everybody thought that Texas was coming in here as the team of all the pressure that they play tight, but it wasn't that way today. It's entirely opposite. The, the pressure was at the regional level. They had never made it past regionals before, Gary, and when they had that very tight game against Old Miss and won that, it really took a lot of the pressure off, although I do think they played tight in the semifinal game Friday night. Today, there isn't a sign of that tightness. Now they're going to hook them horns, and of course, people back in Austin are going to be very proud of this Lady Longhorn team. She can't be even smiling as she fires the ball up the floor. 91-76, that's a lot of points. You know, this year Texas won by a margin of over 27 a game. I mean, they have dominated. They've they had absolutely statistically every advantage, it seems. Gary, the interesting point about that, the domination and the differential in score, is they've also played the toughest schedule in the nation. That's an incredible tribute to this team. Well, you know, the first game that they played this year, very similar score is starting to occur here. You know, it was 94-78, and it's 93-76 right now. Almost similar scores. I think many people thought that uh, playing down in Austin would have made the difference, but it doesn't seem to make any difference to this Texas team. I knew the seniors on this team weren't going to let this pass by. This team has been developed over what's occurred the past three years. First with the injuries two years ago, last year the loss to Western Kentucky, and now all the pressure that they've had to endure this season. Cooper scores. Williams has committed the foul. And she is fouled out of the ball game as Beverly Williams, just a sophomore. You'll see her returning. Her career is not over. Her season is. But it's 93-78 with 2.37 left in this game. And the ladies from the Lone Star State have had things their way. A typical day with the station wagon, except one thing's changed, the station wagon. The new Ford Taurus wagon, with the design and performance that make everyday driving more than an everyday experience. Taurus, now there's an American car that has exactly what we've been looking for. For us, for us, for us, have you driven a Ford? This year, one out of every six cars will need to have its brakes repaired. That's why at Midas, we offer a free brake inspection. If your car needs work, you know it's being done by experts. 500,000 people a year have their brakes fixed at Midas, and we're glad to have the business. But more important, we appreciate the trust. Trust the Midas Touch. 73-78 with 2.37 left in this title game from Lexington, Kentucky in Rupp Arena and the state flag of Texas waving very proudly in the background as well it should. The committee, the women's basketball committee is a real joy to work with and they have been diligently working this week. As you see, some of the members, John Kasser, who is the athletic director at the Cal State Long Beach, he was quite a basketball player at one time. People who we have enjoyed very much working with and I, uh, I can't tell you how hard they've worked. They were up one morning until 2 o'clock trying to decide uh, what they wanted to do as far as decisions were concerned. You're also looking at Fern Gardner, Susie Pembroke-Jones, and there is Nora Lynn Finch, who is the chair in the red blouse, and I'll tell you what, she runs a very tight ship. She has this group <laughs> whipped into order, I'll tell they, you. They call her Mother Superior because we're <laughs> disciplined. You said that, not me. <laughs> But I, I just want to thank that committee. It's been a, a real pleasure working with them. Started with a pairing show back in Kansas City, and now we're down to the last two and a half minutes of the season. 93-79. Tammy 
Etheridge. Hasn't scored a lot, but she's done everything else. Texas in no hurry, obviously. You know, the shot clock hasn't even been a factor today, has it? No, not with two transition teams. It usually doesn't come into effect. Winding it down now to nine. Davis will kick it back out as coming into the ball game for the first time is Audrey Smith, Annette's sister. And here we go to the other end. Kaylin Wright. Kaylin Wright, a sophomore out of Fresno, with two minutes left now in the game. Don't forget now, uh, we're a little bit late in joining it, but we'll get there as soon as this one's over. We'll be going to the Tournament Players Championship. See if Larry Mize can hang on to that lead. A sensational round yesterday. Texas really needs to just use the clock right now to their advantage. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Working inside for a good shot. Well, what about next year? You've got Davis coming back. Uh, there's Davis following again. She just puts the finishing touches on everything. They've got Andrea Lloyd, a junior. Beverly Williams, a sophomore. They're going to be tough. They've also got a couple key recruits coming in. Susan Anderson, for one, is going to be very exciting for this team next year. What about USC? What will they have coming back? Of course, uh, one of those players will be Rhonda Wyndham and Sherry Nelson and Holly Ford. Those three will be back. Again, some key recruits. Tammy Hammond out of New Jersey. They also have a 6'7 red shirt. Monica Lamb, who they expect to play for the next year. By the way, that 6'7 reminds me there was some talk that Cheryl Miller might slam dunk one if she got an opportunity in this tournament. George Ann Wells of uh, West Virginia. She's 6'7. She's the only one to ever do that. Is That's that correct? Right. She did it twice in regular season games. Audrey Smith out of Bay City, Texas. They sign pass to her sister. Hempel tries to come up with it. And does. Smart move. They're using every bit of that 30-second clock. Jody Conrad still hasn't set down. Will she not any time, even though they're leading by this big margin? I don't, I don't think she still believes it. <laughs> there she is, still standing. I'm waiting for the smile to break out, guys. There's got to be one in there somewhere, right? I don't think anybody can come back from 14 points down with 49 seconds to go. I think that's a sure bet. You know, when she got that technical in the first half, she really kind of turned things around a little bit. It was key. That just indicates what kind of coaching ability she has. She's well aware of what needs to be done for her players on the floor. She was the daughter of a semi-pro baseball player. She said she was a tomboy growing up. She's single, and she has really won the admiration of her peers, being the national coach of the year, as Cooper now has fouled out of the ball game. 27 points ties the championship record, but probably be a little comfort to Cynthia with her team losing this ball game. But Cynthia played a strong game coming back after missing a year. She grew up in the Watts area, had to drop out of basketball to help her family financially, working, and, and I think it's an outstanding story that she's come back and done so well in her senior year. Larissa Davis, on the other hand, will have three more years, and that's bad news for all of the <laughs> opponents of Texas. Hempel makes it a 97-81 game. Texas has been over 100 points five times. They may get it today. Jody Conrad just did something very smart. She wanted Cammie Etheridge to leave to a standing ovation, so she just substituted Yolanda Wimbish for Cammie. Cammie's got a great personality. She was delightful to talk to yesterday in the press conference. Here's Hal, and she can hit those from outside. Great range. So we have 30 seconds left in the title game. What a performance by Texas. Ooh, hitting the deck hard was Fran Harris. And Ed Smith out to Audrey, her sister, and didn't get it. Here's Pyers out of Tucson. All the Pyers, a sophomore. And losing the basketball is Kalen Wright. You know, I don't think Jody smiles yet over there. I've been watching Mimi, and she's still uh, still very intent. Now she's going down there, and some congratulations. She's down hugging Cammy. I think the emotion you're going to see from this team after this game will be more than a, more than worth a thousand words. And here it is. Texas has won their first national championship. Perfect 
season for Texas. They finished 34-0. The number one ranked team from beginning to end, winning their first NCAA championship and becoming the first NCAA team to end the season undefeated. Can Texas win the big one? You bet they can. They just did it. On the other hand, Cheryl Miller, a disappointing finish to a great career as she and Cammie Etheridge hug. And you cannot say enough for Cheryl Miller. Linda Sharp denied her third national championship as the Longhorns of Texas have dominated. They have won it, the final, 97-81. Master locks are tough under tough conditions. Tough under pressure. Tough under fire. It took me totally by surprise. The other day, some guy asked me how... And Cammy Etheridge, she didn't score a lot, but she did everything else, assist-wise, rebound-wise as they finish 34-0. And Jody Conrad, you're smiling now. I really am. I am so pleased. Uh, this team is really special, and I've known that all year, and I'm just so glad they were rewarded for it. The key to the game? I think the key to the game is hard to identify, but I'd have to say Kara Pretty's my hero. Wasn't she something? She had 15 points, and she was a force inside. Kara is that kind of player who's been on the bench a lot, who has sat and been in a supporting role. But the game on uh, Friday and tonight, she came to play. Uh, I heard her say today, they said, this is Cheryl Miller's last game. She's a senior. And Kara said, I'm a senior, too. I'm going to play, too. You know, you've been ranked number one for three years, and people are saying, hey, can the Lady Longhorns win the big one? Or you put that behind you. Well, I think that's a bum rap. I think we've had the hardest draw in NCAA championships in terms of getting here. But we got here, we played well, and I don't think I've seen too many teams that are better than this one. 34-0, what can you do for an encore? That's perfect, and you strive for perfection, and we're going to enjoy it. Congratulations, Thank Jody. You. Thanks. A delightful woman and a delightful victory here for the Lady Longhorns. As they finish 34-0, and they are victory today, 97-81, the TPC to follow. Final round coverage. We want to thank the Women's Basketball Committee for the outstanding job they have done as this 1986 season has come to a close. And here are the faces of the 12 players who led the Lady Longhorns to victory. An impressive a victory that uh, probably was as impressive as any in the history of the Women's Basketball Tournament. A 97-81 victory. It's been an outstanding tournament. Congratulations to Texas as well as to USC. USC finishing the year at 31-5, and, and of course, the career has ended for Cheryl Miller. For Mimi Griffin, I'm Gary Bender saying so long, everybody. Nobody has lower fares than United to more... win of his life as we bring you the final round of the Tournament Players Championship coming up live. freshman for UCLA. This one on a 40-yard run. He also scored from 36 and 32, 227 yards rushing, a near record. The four touchdowns ties a Rose Bowl record. Chuck Long of Iowa, the Heisman Trophy runner-up behind Bo Jackson.